Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and this is different. I have failed prints in front of me. I've got a rotary tool, and I've got some 2.85 millimeter filament, and this is kind of interesting. So what I'm planning on doing is attempting to do some friction welding. And what I mean by that is I'm going to use this rotary tool to spin a piece of 2.85 millimeter PLA filament fast enough to where the heat from the friction is able to melt it. And if I apply that friction and that heat to two pieces that I'm trying to join together, the idea is then they, they, they become welded. So it's a way of joining 3D printed parts without using solvents or glues or magical unicorn butter, I guess. Here's the idea. I snipped a piece, a really tiny piece, but not too tiny, of 2.85 millimeter filament. This is actually Matter Hacker's Pro PLA Black Filament. The idea is simple, and I'm going to use these failed Darth Vader prints to demonstrate that it can, in fact, work. Ah, before anything, let's play it safe. Let's wear some safety glasses. Yeah, I think so, too. Also, I've got my new GoPro Hero 5, and what I'm going to do is use this to capture the footage from my point of view so that you can actually see what's going on. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hold these together because I can't seem to find any of my clamps. Bob, if you're watching this, send some clamps. Uh, I'm gonna hold these together and then I'm going to attempt to friction. I'm gonna hold these together and then I'm going to attempt a friction weld by using this rotary tool. Maybe if I put it that way, maybe that'll work. Okay, and I've got the GoPro set up. The GoPro will be able to see it. Let's see what happens. All right, as you can see, <laughs> I've got nothing left on the nub here. So I've actually gone through and I've used all that bit of filament that I had. Uh, I will lock this in place to keep it safe. And what's interesting, uh, if you make it too long, then you're gonna be dealing with uh, forces that may break it or bend it or something like that. But we've got this here and if I lift this up, you can see that it is in fact, welded together at this point. It's not, uh, it's just on this one face. So the idea that it's welded is good, but we should probably weld some other places. All we need to do is undo this. We can take that piece out and then we need to cut another piece. I'm just using flush cutters and I'm just cutting a piece roughly an inch long, like that. Let's put it in. Let's tighten it up. Righty tighty lefty loosey. Here we go. Let's spin this. Here we go. I got a little bit more left on the nub that time. It was a longer piece. If I pick this up, it should hold just fine. There we go. That's not too shabby. I welded it across two little places and that's a good weld. If we look right here, you should be able to see what that looks like on the outside. Now, would I choose this method for a piece like this if I was attempting to attach these together? And most likely I would not. Two pieces, very flat, a CA glue or an epoxy or something like that is going to hold these together just perfect. But if you're in a situation where 
you are out of glue, which that's happened to me, I'm sure it's happened to you as well, and if you're in a situation where you happen to have a rotary tool and you happen to have some 2.85 millimeter filament or a chuck that fits 1.75 millimeter filament, well then, this might work. So here's another interesting uh, proof of concept of this. These are two of the pieces from the Open RC project from Daniel Noré, and it's the it's the bottom. So these two pieces, let's see, I don't have my glasses on, so it's hard to put together. These two pieces, <laughs> let's see, fit together just like that, and they it's it's a decent fit. They're uh, they're these were printed on the Race 3 N2, N2 Plus, and it does have good tolerance. And you can tell that these are fit together just fine, but they do come apart. So when making this, if you wanted to then apply a friction weld along this seam, it's entirely possible. I think it'll be interesting to use some black 2.85 millimeter filament for this one because you're going to get to see the filament that's being used for the friction weld and the filament used for the print itself are different colors and there should be some contrast there. I do have the GoPro again. Clean up my workspace a little bit. All right. Let's see. There we go. Now you can see. Let's give it a try. There we go. If you look at this, you can see that there is a difference in the filament colors and I shouldn't be able to pull it apart. And I certainly cannot. It's a little bit rough. Here, I'll show you in the GoPro. It's a little bit rough through here, but some sandpaper or um, uh, a sanding block or a sanding sponge would easily be able to take care of that. And then what you could do across this is use a, a slight bit of filler. So a Bondo, a wood fill, or uh, what Bill over at Punished Props taught me to use was um, baby powder with CA glue that acts as a decent filler for small spaces. And there we go. All right, well, that's it. Uh, I really thought this was interesting. I saw quite a number of videos across the internet uh, when I did my research on this. And it's so simple. All you need is a rotary tool. So like I said, this is a Black & Decker, a Dremel obviously comes to mind, but all you need is a rotary tool, filament that fits the chuck, and two pieces that want to be held together for eternity. There we go. All right. Well, hey, thanks for watching. If you thought this tip was interesting, I would appreciate a thumbs up, or if you've done this, or if you have some ideas for how this is best used, please leave those down in the comments. Big thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com. Some cool stuff coming up for them. Uh, all right. Have a happy day. Don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five.